Hey there, so in the spirit of spring cleaning and getting rid of things and minimizing and all this kind of stuff, let's talk today about what are the few tools that I actually come to rely on for weaving day in and day out. I couldn't live without these things. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about knitting and weaving and spinning or dyeing. Today, I wanna to talk about getting rid of lots of things. <laughs> Actually, no, not about getting rid of lots of things, about just curating your collection of tools and making sure that those things work the best for you. As you can see, we're in the new studio here, and this has become sort of a second weaving studio for me, which sounds crazy, but I have my attic at home where I have a big loom and I weave there. I have a loom that has migrated into my dining room, and so there's a corner of my dining room that has been taken over by weaving stuff as well. And now this space as well has a big weaving loom, has weaving tools in here. And so I wanna make sure that my weaving life is really streamlined, that it's really minimal, that I don't have a ton of stuff floating around. And so the things that I do keep and keep on hand, I wanna make sure that these are the things that I use over and over again, and I've come to rely on them. They've become part of my system and how I do things. So I wanted to share with you today five things that I have found to be absolutely indispensable when it comes to weaving. These are the five things that I use for pretty much every weaving project. And so if you are looking at, you know, collecting tools for weaving, trying to figure out what do you actually need? So hopefully I can share with you that you don't really need that much stuff and you can just collect a small collection of things that really work well for you. So the very first thing is that I use these little rings that you can get from the dollar store. I got these from the Japanese dollar store and they're just the rings that kind of lock together. You use these for stationery and things like that. But I've been using these locking rings sort of uh, at the end of my lee sticks. The lee sticks help to hold your cross for your warp. So when you are creating a warp on a warping board, you've made a cross and that cross helps to organize all of your threads, either one by one or two by two or group by group or however you've chosen to wind your warp. And that cross basically indicates to you which thread comes next. So from the day that I started learning how to weave, it was just uh, drilled into my head how important it was to maintain the cross, maintain the cross. <laughs> until it gets onto the loom and threaded and everything. It's not safe unless you've maintained the cross. And so I use the lee sticks to maintain the cross and uh, the lee sticks are then secured together with these two rings. Now, when I learned how to weave, we didn't have these rings. What we used was just masking tape and we would tape together the two ends of the lee sticks. And then um, I learned how to take a thread and loop it through the various holes on the ends of your lee sticks and then with the other end, loop it through the other way so that it would form this nice uh, secure holding pattern for the lee sticks and to hold them in front of the loom so that you could do your warping process. Now, I actually use these things, these are called the helping hands. They're made by Ashford. And what I do is basically take, there's two of them here, one for each side of the loom. So if I have my lee sticks here, I take one end and that goes through the lee sticks. And then this would go around a post or a pole or part of the actual loom. And then I take the end again and then loop it back the other way so that it's formed its own little cross here. And with the other end, with this end, I basically just tie it together on the other side of the loom. And I've demonstrated this a few times on video where I'm weaving and things like that. And so this is just a really, really easy way to suspend your lee sticks in front of your loom. So I use this process when I tie on a new warp uh, in, front of the, in front of the reed and everything like that. So this has just been the easiest way to set up my lee stick. This has been the greatest lifesavers. They're just called helping hands. The next part of the weaving process is where you actually have to go and dress your loom. So part of dressing your loom involves, you know, winding all of your warp yarn onto your back beam and then putting the, uh, each warp end through the heddles. For that, I just use my fingers. I don't actually use a tool for that, but you can get a tool for that. It's called a heddle hook. I, I just, I don't really use a heddle hook. Um, I've always just pushed the yarn through with my fingers. Um, and then the last thing that you need is a 
reed hook. So this is a brass reed hook that is from Schacht. I've used this for many, many years. This is probably from from 2009, I think I've had this one. And uh, it's great. It's just really handy. It's really ergonomic, fits in your hand. Really, really easy to use. And I just, I tie a little string to it so that I don't lose it. I hang it off of the side of the loom or, or keep it handy like that. So that is really handy to have. But I also found that this one came with the rigid head of looms. And this is kind of like a two in one. So on one side is just like a reed hook, and then on the other side, this one is a heddle hook. So it has two purposes. Now, when it comes to actually weaving, my preference, because I have smaller hands, I'm on the short side, I'm 5'2", I'm short, my hands are smaller, everything I want to be a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, a little bit slimmer. And so one of my favorite shuttles is this one. This is the uh, Slim Boat Shuttle by Schacht. I believe this is 11 inches. So this is, the slim version of their single boat shuttle uh, because the height of this is supposed to be a little bit slimmer and it goes through smaller sheds, like slightly smaller sheds. And so this one is nice. I find it to be really easy to catch on to, really easy to hold, um, easy to transfer. I like these shuttles where they have the open bottom because it allows your hands and your fingers to kind of tension underneath with that bobbin and you kind of touch the, the bobbin to slow it down, stop it from turning, stop the yarn from winding off too quickly. And so that is a nice, easy way to have control over your weft yarn. This is a maple one, but they also come in cherry and they just turn into the most beautiful colors. So this one, this maple one has been with me for a number of years. So you can see it's changed color quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Now, if this one is not slim enough for you, there is uh, one that I just got, which I haven't really had a chance to use very much, but this one is from Bluster Bay, Bluster Bay Woodworks. I believe these are all handmade, and this one is the Super Slim Shuttle. This one is called their Super Slim Shuttle. Super Slim. This one, it happens to be walnut. It's made out of these beautiful woods. This one's walnut and it has this little pin. This is the locking pin. And so that is how your, your bobbin would come out. Now, because this is so slim, you can see, you can see this is the height of it versus this one. It's almost like, it's almost not half, but it's about three quarters the size of this, three quarters the height of this one. So this one is much, much slimmer. And so because it's so slim, it does not fit a regular bobbin, like a traditional weaving bobbin. So what you actually need to do is use paper quills. And paper quills are just like very, very tiny, small rolls of paper, um, cardboard. And uh, you would just basically wind your yarn onto that paper roll, the paper tube. When I bought the shuttle, the paper quills was, were sold out. And so I tried to make my own, but I made it actually too big. The diameter of this paper quill that I tried to wind myself is too big. And so, in fact, when I try to weave, the bottom of the paper quill is kind of hanging out the bottom and it was getting caught in the shed and the bottom was getting caught every time I was weaving on it. And so what I need to do to fix this is basically just to make a thinner paper quill. And so to make a paper quill, all you do is you just, you can get a piece of paper that's about this wide and you can cut it into a circle shape and then you just roll it up very ever so gently like so. And then you can start to wind your yarn into that paper roll and you are on your way. So this super slim shuttle would work well for very, very small sheds and stuff like that. Um, I think very often people like really mini shuttles or very narrow slim shuttles for things like rigid heddles. Uh, rigid heddle looms would, would work really well with a shuttle like this. Now, this is the other shuttle that I use almost exclusively, and this is the Schacht end delivery shuttle or end feed shuttle. So you can see this one I've had also for, for many, many years. So that's why the color has changed. It's significantly darker. It's significantly darker. It's much, much more yellow. This one is also maple. And here is a newer one. The newer maple one it looks almost, yeah, blonde compared to the old one. So as time goes on, they age and the colors change and everything like that. Oh, you can even see this is the original Schacht logo and this is the newer Schacht logo. So time has gone 
time has changed. They're a little bit heavier to hold, but they're also really great because what happens is that the amount of yarn that comes off of here is sort of um, gently, gently tensioned. So it's almost serving the same purpose as having these open bottom shuttles where you're able to touch the bottom and sort of control the, the unwinding of that weft yarn in that same way these end delivery shuttles, they control how much weft yarn comes out at a time. So you don't get tons of yarn unraveling and then having to deal with all that. It just comes off in a very controlled way, which can help make really nice salvages, all sorts of things like that. But I just, I love these shuttles. So this is what I got one for home and one for the studio. So these are regular weaving bobbins that fit into these shuttles here, right? They go like so. So that's a regular weaving bobbin. And you can see in these end delivery shuttles that they don't use a regular bobbin. They use this other thing that's called a pern. And so I'm just gonna pull it out and you can have a look. So a pern looks kind of like this. It's, it's kind of like a mini cone. And so we wind a pern this way, moving along horizontally across the pern until we get to the end. The pern has to be wound quite tightly uh, because if you wind it too loose, chunks of your yarn will just basically come off. So we want to wind it nice and tight. And so in order to wind these perns and also to wind bobbins really efficiently, the one thing that I have been so thankful to have invested in since the very, very beginning is a double-ended electric bobbin winder. Now, the one that I got, I got more than 10 years ago. I got it off of eBay. It was a handmade one. This, this someone was making handmade double-ended electric bobbin winders on eBay. And uh, I got mine for, it was about $100, I think, when I bought it online. <laughs> and at the time I was thinking, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. But it has saved me so much time and energy and I love it. So I keep one at home in my attic room and when we moved into this studio here, I got a new one here made by Leclerc because Leclerc actually makes them officially. So this is the one that Leclerc makes and you can see it's double-ended. You can slide this open to open it to accommodate whatever size bobbin you're using. So obviously it can be larger than this. This is the power here that's provided by a sewing machine motor and this is attached to a foot pedal. That is a sewing machine foot pedal. And the nicest thing about this particular uh, bobbin winder is that I got this attachment here. This attachment is to help tension your yarn as it goes onto the bobbin. Because what I found with my other uh, DIY bobbin winder is that when you step on that sewing machine foot pedal, it goes very fast, it goes quite quickly. And so if you're not careful about how you're holding your weft yarn, you can burn your fingers quite easily or just get this rope burn. And so having this little tensioning device to hold your yarn in place is really quite handy. So we just basically thread it like so, find a little path around here, and then attach this to my bobbin, and then I would get this going. And so you can see that as you are winding it on, you can move this back and forth. Rather than holding the yarn with your hand, you can be holding it with this little tensioning device, and that helps you move the yarn back and forth on your bobbin. So these are the five or so tools that I found to be absolutely indispensable when I'm weaving. Now, obviously this one's a little bit new to me, so I'm gonna be playing with this, having a bit of a walnut moment right now. You can see <laughs> everything that I'm getting is kind of in this walnut color. It's really lovely. So even though I am trying to streamline and minimize and really pare down what I use in my own weaving process, I'm also sort of on the edge trying to learn about and explore different tools that I have never really fully learned how to use. And one of them is a warping paddle. I have these paddles, I've had them for years. I've tried a number of times to figure out how they work. And I always just get completely tangled up and they never work for me. So I'm still working on trying to figure out how those work. Um, and then the other tool that I recently just got, it's just arrived in the mail. I have not even tried to set it up yet. But it's this. This is a temple. 
So if you've never heard of what a temple is, a temple is designed to help hold your fabric apart. It's supposed to hold the cloth apart as you're weaving it uh, to help maintain the width of your cloth, basically. Because as you weave, sometimes your cloth, depending on what it is, it'll draw in a little bit and cause a little bit of wonkiness on the edges. Uh, this is especially helpful when you're weaving rugs, uh, using a temple for a rug to hold apart all of that stuff. So this is what it looks like. This is what the temple looks like now that it's all unwrapped and everything. And so basically it's a quite a simple device or it should be. You can see there's two parts to it. There's this part and this allows the whole thing to bend in two, allows you to adjust it and everything like that. And there's a locking pin here. So the locking pin allows you to figure out how wide do you want this to be. So do you want your cloth to be this wide? Do you want your cloth to be this wide? Let's say you want your cloth to be about here. Okay, so we put the locking pin in and then this brace, we slide that away so that way we can bend this and that makes the distance between this end and this end much smaller. But hopefully you can see at the end of these, you can see these super sharp, <laughs> super sharp pointy things. I think this is gonna stay at the studio where there are no children. Uh, but yeah, that does not look safe for any kids to, you would it totally impale yourself on that. Basically the point of these tips is that that is what's gonna dig into the edges of your cloth. So you stick it into the edges of your cloth and then you push this down and lock this in order to pull the two edges of your cloth apart and hold them apart as you continue to weave. So it's something I'm gonna give a try. <laughs> I have these grand plans of weaving a rug and right now I'm just making it through samplers. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to muster up enough motivation to make the rug, but the largest rug that I can think of making right now is about two feet by three feet. And I think that this is about two feet wide. And I think this is, I think this is, <laughs> I think this is gonna work. So that is basically it for today. Just wanted to share with you the tools that I have found absolutely indispensable in all the years that I've been weaving and also looking at some of the new tools that I'm gonna be exploring and seeing how they work. So I would love to hear from you guys in the spirit of spring cleaning. Have you been getting rid of any tools? Have you found that you don't use most of the tools that you have? Or are there a few that you just cannot live without? I would love to hear about the kinds of tools that you can't live without because I'm always looking to see what works the best. <laughs> so if you want to share that in the comments below, I would really, really love to read about that. Thank you so much for being here today. If you liked this video today, please hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do come back every Friday. We are here. And uh, if you subscribe, you'll get notified about when new videos go up. But we come here every Friday and we talk a little bit about something to do with color and craft, fiber arts, and the things that make us happy. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye for now.